What's up, guys? So, update. Uh, so the heater box, um, I got the O-rings back in, the foam seal, got that put in. Uh, so yeah, everything's done with that. Got the heater box back in the car. And uh, I turned it on, ran it for like 10 minutes, and then um, turned on the heater to make sure that the coolant wouldn't leak through here and it wasn't leaking or anything. Connected up uh, the AC lines. And then after that, I put the dash and everything back in. So now I can go on to repairing the rust. So it seems like in the rear, um, it's mostly just surface. It didn't look like it got too deep. So for the rear, I'm planning on just uh, wire wheeling it. And then I'm going to spray on some primer to stop the rust or stop future rust. And then um, now for the front, it's a lot more damage. So. So um, I wire wheeled the rear half and um, got all the rust out and then lay down the primer. This is what I used. Um, so right now I'm just waiting on some seam sealer from Amazon. So for a seam sealer, um, you don't want to put it on bare metal. So that's why I put the primer first and then I'm going to put seam sealer over it. And then after that you can put paint on top. So now for this hole, there's like a black piece of plastic down there and like some stuff underneath where the gas pedal would uh, normally have a mount and um, I was reading online uh, this is uh, related to like fuel fuel lines and stuff so you gotta be careful with welding near that Right, so I'm underneath the car right now and I just took off this uh, panel. This is supposed to protect all the fuel stuff, the fuel filter. And there's just like uh, four 10 mil bolts. So as you can see, I got all this stuff that comes out uh, after the uh, fuel filter. So I, I don't really know what all of this is. I'll go research uh, and figure out what it is. But you can see right here is there's a giant hole. And this is where the bottom, the floor mount for where the gas pedal is supposed to connect to. And uh, all of this is rusted out. So, so like uh, over there, you can see um, it's... The hole is cut out to the sheet that I want, and I already have a uh, cardboard template made for the sheet metal. So I'm gonna do that for this side. So I'm gonna start cutting and then get to welding. Yeah, so I can. Oh. Right, so as you see, um, did a bit more cutting up there after I removed the uh, this piece from underneath. This is the fuel pressure regulator, and this whole assembly, the black piece, is um, the fuel control valve. I think that's what it's called. And yeah, so I got all of this out. I'm gonna be replacing these um, fuel lines, these rubber hoses, and new uh, hose clamps. Yeah, so I've pretty much gotten all the bad parts cut out into the shape that I want. And then I've also sprayed some of this uh, anti-rust primer on the inside of the frame rail. And before I start welding, um, I'm gonna clean up some of the areas where the, this primer is. Um, grind that down to bare metal and then spray this uh, weld through primer instead on the parts that um, there's going to be welding nearby so, yeah. so before I can start that uh, I need to peel off and like maybe use a wire wheel to get rid of this uh, the undercoating uh, around the area that's going to be welded and I think I'm going to need to take out the fuel filter yeah. all right so we're under the car right now 
And um, you can see right here, I got rid of all the undercoating around the area that I'm going to be welding. Alright, so now I can start preparing the uh, sheet metal that I'm going to be replacing all this with. So I already have a template for this big piece, but uh, it doesn't cover up here because uh, I cut this after. So yeah, um, so I'm just going to need to make this bigger and then also cut a small square for this uh, bottom area. And then yeah. So I'm going to start welding now, um, try to tack it in place and then just start going around. Alright, so I'm done with the welding. As you can see, this is what it looks like. Um, originally, I had it all in one piece, but then um, there's this curved part right here where it makes it pretty hard to weld all of this in as one piece. So I, I cut it up into three pieces. So this one, this one, and this one. And then also uh, another piece, just a tiny little square right here. So yeah, all the welding is done. And uh, there are still some small, tiny little holes you can see through where like the rust ate all the way through but um these are really small it's fine if i leave them because uh repairing these uh small holes with welding would take too much time because i gotta finish this up as soon as possible because my classes are starting again soon so yeah um so these holes are fine i'll just leave them because uh, i'm gonna cover my welds with seam sealer anyways and i'm also gonna spray some uh, undercoating underneath the body so that should uh cover everything so right now, welding is done. Um, I already cleaned up all of this with a wire wheel and uh, wiped it down with some rubbing alcohol. So I'm just gonna spray some primer on here. And uh, right here, I have some weld through primer because uh, I bought this from, I think, S SRS Customs for the uh, gas pedal. So I'm gonna weld it onto here. I've uh, lined up the gas pedal and I used the carpet to uh, measure where this should be uh, placed. It's about five centimeters from where it starts curving upwards. And then it's about uh, 17 from here, the gas pedal stopper. Uh, so that should be good just welded it in a few spots uh it doesn't really need to be welded all the way around uh, this should be strong enough and it'll make it a lot easier if i do end up having to uh, remove this because i can just use my dremel and then um cut these uh four points yeah so now that that's done uh, i'm gonna start working on the uh, seam sealer and get that all around here uh, i got some seam sealer right here so I'm gonna use this to uh, go over the welds and all the spots that uh, originally had seam sealer where I removed it with the wire wheel. Alright, so while the seam sealer is drying, it's gonna take about an hour or so, I have this rubberized undercoating that I'm gonna spray underneath the uh, area that welded the uh, new sheet metal in. As you can see right here. Uh, I've already sprayed uh, the primer, the anti-rust primer. 
camera. It's all dry, so it's pretty much ready to spray this. So it's been about an hour and um, all the seam seal is dried up. So I'm gonna spray the paint now. So I got this paint matched uh, rattle can. It's uh, from Paint Scratch. I'm probably gonna spray like maybe like two or three coats of this uh, paint. And then after that, I can start putting the sound deadening and then get back to the interior swap. So it's the next day and um, yesterday I laid down all the seam sealer and then let that dry and then did like maybe three or four coats of paint and it's supposed to be paint match from paint scratch but the paint match is it's not that good like it's all right because it's for the interior so no one's really gonna see this because it's gonna be under the carpet um yeah so all the paints dried up now and uh, last night I also sprayed some uh, undercoating right here uh, sprayed a lot so it's dripping but it's okay because I have this cardboard here and um, I just sprayed a bit more just to be safe so today I can start putting the interior back but before I do that I actually bought some uh, sound deadening from Amazon right here so I'm gonna put this down in the spots where I removed all the sound deadening and then uh, once it's done, then I can get back to the interior swap. I'm probably not going to record that because uh, it's the same thing as taking everything out, but uh, in reverse order. And uh, it's just black instead of brown. Okay, so... I got the uh, rear half done and normally you're supposed to use like a roller but uh, I forgot to get one so I just use the bottom of my screwdriver and I just flatten it out like that. So yeah, the rear is done um, and I just gotta get started in the front and then I'm not gonna record that because it's the same thing as doing this and you've already seen it so and then uh, before I put the interior back in I'm going to uh, put the fuel filter back in so I don't know if I showed this but um, before I started welding, I actually took off the uh, fuel filter. Yeah, so uh, originally I wasn't going to take off this fuel filter because um, I thought it would be uh, far enough away from the welding. It would be safe, but uh, while I was welding, I saw a little flame actually on here. So the fuel caught fire and then I was able to put it out. So I decided to take this off. All right, so guys, so last time I left off, um, I think I just finished the sound deadening. So it's been a while after that and uh, I pretty much put most of my interior back in um, except for the headliner and some of that stuff because uh, I'm actually planning on doing a sunroof delete. So I've already ordered the sunroof delete panel and I'm going to take out the sunroof cassette, put that panel in and then um, do some Bondo and get it painted so that it's like a slick top. See, so yeah, I'm just waiting for that panel so that's why I have the headliner out. but. Everything else, you can see, um, there's still some panels missing, like this one. Uh, but on the passenger side, um, all the panels are back. You know, rear seats are back, carpets in and everything. <laughs> and I also picked up some parts from my picking pole, like I got a new uh, armrest. Um, this piece is new. Uh, so last time I left off with that sound dead, I think that was like maybe three weeks, two weeks ago. All right, so um, after I did all that interior stuff, um, I was having a issue with the battery being drained. It would happen like overnight when everything's supposed to be off. Somehow the battery would just die in the morning. And it was like a three amp draw, I think. Yeah, so it was just constantly pulling three amps from the battery, even though all the devices and electronics should be off. So after some testing, um, it wasn't any of the fuses and um, everything electrical, I think is supposed to go through the fuse box. Um, so since it was none of the fuses, I think the last thing it could be was the alternator. So normally the alternator isn't supposed to um, draw any current, but when um, 
a piece called the rectifier. It has a bunch of diodes and diodes are basically one-way valves but for electricity. So I think the rectifier went bad in the alternator and um, that was causing power to go in the reverse direction. So instead of going from the alternator into the battery, when everything was off, electricity was going from the battery to the alternator. So it was just draining that, um, I think getting lost as heat or something. So yeah, uh, got an alternator from pick and pull. Um, got a bunch of other parts too, some interior bits. So that was good. And then I started having a misfire issue. Alright, so cylinder six was misfiring and uh, it wasn't the ignition coil. So um, I pulled out the spark plug and it was really oily. There's a lot of oil in there and the ground electrodes were broken off like there's supposed to be four on my spark plugs and they were all just gone so i guess they just fell into the cylinder and i'm hoping they came out the exhaust or got caught in the cast or something yeah so i got a new spark plug uh did the valve cover gasket because uh, oil was leaking in uh, so the o2 sensor was like bad since i bought this car it's like been almost a year now so i don't know why i put it off for that long but i finally got it done um o2 sen new o2 sensor is in so that along with the new spark plug plus the uh, valve cover gasket. I did all of those three uh, in one day and then uh, fixed the misfiring issue. So the car is all good now. And yeah, so that's pretty much it, I guess. Uh, next video is gonna be, I think uh, a maintenance video, just doing some cooling system stuff. And then um, after that, I have uh, an interesting video coming up. It's gonna be about a uh, really cool device for your cluster. It just tracks a bunch of data and like information. You can see all this data real time with like graphs and like all that stuff. So it's really cool. Um, that's gonna be a bit later. And uh, yeah, so stay tuned for more videos.